may be seated in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I will never know. I will never know how much it costs. It's a wonderful day in the presence of God today. And I want to specially welcome everyone in the house today. Just jam those hands and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. I'm so, so super excited to have you in the house today. And those that are worshiping with us online, I say God bless you for joining this great service. Praise God. It's um, a privilege that God has given to us to be in his presence. Hallelujah. But there are many that believe and sought so strongly to be alive today. One way or the other, the Lord has kept us. God has kept you. It is not by your strength. It's not by your power. It's not because you are so smart, but God has kept you all the way. Praise God. Some of us experienced the devil came knocking on our door all this whole trial time. But the Lord said no. The message of God upon your life said no. And I want to especially give God thanks for the members of the Dunamis Palace and also all our partners. Amen. You have been there. Praise God. You've been there all through the time. You know, there is a saying that goes this way, that you know, out of sight is out of mind, right? But it's not like that with us. We are superly charged and connected in the realm of the spirit. And we've come to know that it's not just based on our human intellectuals, but it's based on the glory of God and also the power that is at work here in the Dunamis Palace. And I want to say thank you for standing your ground. Thank you for standing tall. Thank you for being part of and pass all of this great work. I want to also let you know that the journey has not come to an end. We are still moving. Praise God. Even though the storm hits, but we are still standing. And I pray that the same grace that has kept us standing all this while will keep you standing strong all day in the name of Jesus. That amen is not born again. That amen doesn't look like you. If you know and you know that you are the redeemed of the Lord, let that amen come like thunder. In the name of Jesus Christ, we we'll pray. Hallelujah. You ready this morning? Just be on your feet, be on your feet, be on your feet wherever you are. Be on your feet wherever you are. Give him praise. Just wave those hands. Wave those hands to him. He's awesome. Somebody say something good to him. He's an awesome God. Lego Rashata Brada do Sida Gade. Preda Roshata Gabaha. You're not saying something? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and say something good to him. Somebody's not worshiping. Somebody worship his name. He's a great I am. Great God. Great God of mine. What a great God. What a God. We give you all praise, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. Just worship him. Only you, O oh Lord. Are great. See, you are great. You are great. You are great. Oh, you are great. See, you are great. You 
this morning so I need your heart to be in a place where the Lord can touch you and transform you hallelujah it is the desires of the Lord to empower you supernaturally it is what God has always wanted make you great. Today I'm going to be speaking on the topic I've captioned, faith to be an agent of change. Faith to be an agent of change. Every one of us wants change. Am I communicating? Everybody wants change. But you see, it takes the change in you to change your world. It takes the change in your mind. That's why Paul was speaking. He said, be ye transformed through the renewer of your mind. Meaning your mind has to accept some level of transformation so you will become a transformer that will produce light. Am I communicating with somebody? Change is something that is necessary. Amen. So therefore, only changed people can change their world. And also for you to change, you need the grace and the word of God to be able to sink down inside of you. Until Peter was changed, he couldn't become an agent of change. When Jesus was taken hostage, the Bible said all his disciples, they all absconded. They ran away. But Peter was confronted by a 12 years old girl. Because the change of God was not yet present inside of Peter. Peter had the audacity to deny Christ. But that same Peter at the upper room in the book of Acts, that same man that could not have the boldness to stand as an agent of change had the boldness to speak before thousands of people and to defend his faith. Child of God, it is a season of change. Am I communicating with somebody? You must accept the, the, the turnaround that God is putting in your life. 
and you must accept it because the word of God charges you up. It takes the charge, a charged mind to be a changed mind. I come back again. It takes a charged mind to be a changed mind. Until your mind is charged by the spirit of God, your mind will not be a changed mind. Praise God. So faith to be an agent of change. If your faith lacks proof, then it's fake. If your faith lacks proof, then it's fake. Let's see something in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. If your faith lacks proof, then you were never faithful. You cannot say you have faith and you are disappointed. Praise God. After this message today, you will understand that true faith brings and generates great results. Are you there in the book of Hebrews chapter 11? He said, now faith is the word substance of things hoped for. The next word there says what? The evidence. The evidence. So if your faith has no proof, then there was no evidence. For your faith to have proof, there must be evidence in your life that you are a man and a woman of faith. Praise God. And the Bible says, it says the just shall live by faith. This dispensation and this generation we are, we need rugged faith for rugged results. If you must have a mighty and a rugged result, you must be able to develop your faith to a height. Whereby even when you see a place and they say nothing is happening there and nobody is succeeding there. Because you have faith in God, you take that journey. Am I communicating with somebody? How many are ready to take that journey this morning? There was a story, a parable that was told by Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 18 from verse 1 then to 8. Jesus was talking about a widow that met an unjust judge and the judge wasn't ready to listen to the ply or, and the cry of the woman. You see, but this woman persists. She continued knocking on the door and the, finally the judge had to attend to her request. And when Jesus said that, Jesus said to his disciples and said to them, he said, when the son of man shall come, shall he find this kind of faith? When the son of man shall come, can he find this kind of faith? Your brother by your side or your sister by your side may be fitting and you are faking. Faith is not something you can manufacture. And you don't buy faith from Walmart. They don't sell faith in Costco. There is no school where they have a particular course outline called faith. You can only derive faith from the word of God. Am I communicating with somebody? Faith is the vehicle that carries you from your point zero to your point hero. And I hear you say faith. Without faith, the Bible says it is impossible to please God. Whatever you do in life, child of God, must mix it with faith. Faith is a necessity for your victory on every side. 
Faith is what tells you to blindly go into it. But you will surely come out with your eyes open and rejoicing. Faith is not a theory. Faith is not a principle. Faith is a mystery. The Bible said in verse 2 in Hebrews chapter 11, it said, for by it the elders obtain what? Good report. So faith brings testimony. How can you have faith in a God that you have never seen before. You say you believe the God you've never seen before. And your brother or the next person believe the same way and they are seeing results and you're not seeing results. Faith is beyond confessional statement. Faith is beyond confessional statement. Because if I say, do you have faith? Everybody can say, yes, I have faith. But when I say, show me the proof of your faith. Tell you the truth. 75% of the congregations of our today's church does not have proof of their faith. You cannot ride on the back of faith of your brother. Every man must walk their way with fear and trembling. What has kept the Dunamis Palace going all this way is faith. Nothing else. Some persons think that maybe there is something else. No, nothing else is faith. Faith. To them that believe, gave he power. You cannot experience miracle without having the foundation of faith. Faith is the grandfather of every testimony. Ah, am I talking to somebody? Faith is the foundation on which every great testimony is told. The woman with the issue of blood, even as weak as she was, she was able to break through the crowd. And she said in her heart that if only I could touch the hem of his garment. That was dangerous faith. And the faith came upon her. And she was able to tear through and to get her results. And I charge you today to have faith. Some of us are believers, but we don't even believe in the believing that we believe. Some of us say, oh, we are, we are anointed believers, but you are not as anointed to chase the demon that has been chasing you. Now, it's not because you've not been empowered. You have been empowered, but you've not been able to assimilate that empowerment inside of your spirit. And I will tell you today the reason why your faith has not been working. I will tell you the reason why when you pray, after you finish praying, you get up from your prayers and say, now I have faith right, to walk and when you go there, they will reject you. young girl some time ago wrote a particular exams and uh, her name was not there among those that made it. Her mom told her to accept the condition and the result. She said no. This testimony was told in our church. She said no. She said because the other day I heard pastor said that anything that you don't want speak about it. A young girl of 15, 16 years. And she kept on disturbing the mother and said, I want to go see pastor. 
Let me tell you. You cannot borrow my faith to use it to go out for the day. <laughs> you can't borrow the faith of your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, please, can I use your faith a little bit just for three hours? I'll return it back. And she said to the mother, said, no, I will not accept it. Your faith comes through your doggedness in what you believe in. She said, no, I won't accept it. How is it that my name is up, it's not among those that were listed? And the mother said, okay, you want to see pastor? Let us go. Sunday after service, we came to the office. The mother jokingly said that my daughter said she will not accept the results. And I said to her, what's the problem? She told me. I said, so what do you want? She said, pastor, I just need you to say something. When you approach the word of God and the grace and the anointing of the Lord casually, you become a casualty. Many today has fallen victim because they approach God and the things of God casually. I refuse to be a casual believer. And you must not accept anything that tries to introduce God within or around you as a casual God. And you must not treat the things of God casually because that's where it starts from. And I said to her, child of God, because you have faith on the oil that is upon my head, I said to her, go back to that place. You will have your name written on that system. And she went back the next day, being Monday, and, 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 and told the guys in the office and say, I've come to check my name. They said, but we checked the other day, your name is not here. She said, no, my pastor said that my name is in there. They laughed. I said, is your pastor among our staffs? She said, no. She said, but she, he said that my name is in there. And when they opened the system, her name was number three online. Out of 150 something names, her name missed seriously appear. I prophesy to you today that anywhere you were rejected because your faith will increase today, you will be accepted in the name of Jesus. That amen is not born again. Faith is not what you suspect. You know, people suspect faith. I, I believe, I suspect that I have faith. No, faith is an assurance. Faith is as sure as your name. You see the way you believe your name? You believe that your name is your name. That when they call your name, you turn around. That's how the identity of faith is in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> the woman with the issue of blood, she told herself that today will not pass me by. And why many were pushing her left and right. She kept on following consistently, never giving up. You know, even in the midst of her trying to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, many were telling her that she's smelly. And you know what? The mystery about that is that her problem paved the way for her. Her smelly situation paved way for her. Because as she was coming, they're clearing the way. I pray today that your disappointment will turn around to be an appointment for you. You are not serious with that amen. May that amen come like thunder. Her situation paved way for her. I cannot to know how things have been with you all this while. But I decree today that God is turning your disappointment into an appointment for you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says she kept on pushing and pressing. For the kingdom of God is here and everybody press and hit her to everyone must press if you are not pressing you will be oppressed 
am I talking to somebody? In life is either something is pressing you or you are pressing something. I pray today anything that is oppressing you, may you turn around and oppress that thing in the name of Jesus. Build your faith. Have faith, child of God. For without faith, your Christianity is a shamble. Without faith, the devil will mesmerize you and you will have nothing to do about it. You cannot, you can, you, you cannot claim faith when you can't defeat the little devil that has been mesmerizing you. You have to defeat the devil via the faith you have in God. We all read the scriptures and we all believe that we believe it, is it not? But not everybody operates in faith based on the scriptures. That's why when you have challenges, the first place your mind runs to is where your faith is. Well, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. The first place your mind runs to for help is where you have anchored your faith. And the Bible says, Cause is the man that puts his hope on his fellow man. That you were rejected from that contract. The first thing you are thinking of, the person that connected you. You are not even thinking of the one that gives the person life to connect you. Why will I waste my time go to mortar man when I know that he has nothing to offer me? Some of us, we have challenges. The first, immediately your heart did just touch you somehow. The first thing you are thinking is your doctor. Hey, I have to go and see Dr. Cheksnovic. My doctor needs to check me. Ah, but you're just reading Bible. I need to, I need, I need to die, I need to die 911. I need to call my doctor's office and book an appointment. I'm not saying going to for checkup is not is not good. It's good, but those things are by the way. Where is your hope anchored? Who or what is it? in your life that when you think of you have confidence songwriters say I have confidence in you oh Lord Jesus I have confidence in you any time any day is your confidence in Christ the psalmist says some trust in chariots some in horses. But we, <laughs> we trust in the name of the Lord our God. And because we trust in his name, the hosts of darkness are all brought down. I tell you, you see, when I tell you that I'm like a moving train, no devil there stops me. If anyone put, you see, it is, it is, not, it is not a reasonable idea for a person to use it, his hand to stop a moving train. You'll be crushed. When you are a person of faith, and I tell you one thing, I tell you one secret. Don't seek for people to always understand you. <laughs> the moment you seek for everybody to understand you, then something is wrong with you. You're pleasing man. For the ways of the Lord are not the ways of man. So if God is in you, your ways sometimes will be very mysterious. Because it's an act of the Holy Spirit. Every mystery in your life, may it be demystified. In the name of Jesus, may God open your eyes to see areas that you've never seen before. Let me tell you, success can be before you, but because your eyes is focused on man, you will not be able to see. 
haven't you discovered that there are certain things that after a long while you discover it, you say, what? So this thing has been here all this while and I couldn't see it. That's because your eyes have been blinded by the gods of this world. Sammy said, I will lift up my eyes up to the hills. From whence cometh my help? He said, my help cometh from the Lord which made the heavens and the earth. Where is your faith anchored? Because you cannot be an agent of change when your faith is fake. I hear some people say, fake it until you, until you get it. No, it doesn't work. If faith is not there, faith is not there. Faith is a spirit. <laughs> I remember when uh, my wife was having our first baby. You know, I was with her all through because I have been so busy all day at church. So when she went into labor, I was there. And when she went in, they, she delivered. They brought the baby and showed to me. And I said to her, God bless you and bless the baby going back tomorrow is church and when I left her and went back to the house to have at least to catch five hours sleep before I could return back to to the hospital after service at about 5.30 a.m. I never knew my phone has been ringing so long. What was it? When I picked, when I picked the phone, I heard the nurse say to me, "Sir, wherever you are, please rush down to the hospital." And I said, "What could this be? My wife has delivered safe and sound, and she's okay and fine." Jumped into the vehicle and drove like James Bond, 007. When I got in the hospital, by law, back in Nigeria, there government hospitals, as a man you don't come into the place where the woman delivers. So, when I got there, they said, sir, you can't come in. The first person that told me, sir, you can't come in, I just shoved her quietly to the wall. The next person that came, I shoved her quietly and when the, when the senior doctor came, she's a Muslim and when she said, sir, please, you can't come. Somebody, I, 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 I don't even know who that person is said to her, say, Madam, please. He's a pastor. And the woman said, okay, as I went in, here's my wife, bleeding. You know the amazing thing? While I was in the hospital, I, I witnessed a woman bled to death. The same spirit that took the life of that woman was after my wife. And when I got in there, See, let me tell you, I was, I didn't say, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I pray for her now, let answer come. No, I went in there with boldness like a lion. How dare you, Satan? And I laid hands on her. I said, bleeding, I command you, stop in the name of Jesus. And I said to the nurse close by, I said, clean out. And the bleeding ceased. After that day, I came back the next day to check on her. And some persons were saying that, you know, that it's hard for us to have a woman that has bled up to that level to be alive. Faith rejuvenates. Faith gives you assurance. Faith is the boldness you use to walk in darkness and yet you come out as light. Are you aware that light was called out of darkness? The Bible says, and God spoke. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Was God negotiating with darkness? No, he wasn't. The reason why you go and you believe you have faith and you are rejected is because before you went there, you had a 50-50 mindset. <laughs> faith is an assurance. That what you have received, you will keep. Faith is not a suggestion. Am I communicating somebody? 
So then, if all this was mighty, and the Bible said it in verse number 4 of the Hebrews 11, it said, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Men did things by faith, and God honored them. Can I shock you? If your faith says yes, God will not say no. Whatsoever you say, if you believe, the Bible says you will receive them back. You will receive everything you've said. You've re you will receive all that you have desired. Am I talking to somebody? Then what is faith? Are you there with me? Concentrate. What is faith? Faith is not a religious theory. Faith is not because you're a member of a church. That's why you have faith. Hello? Faith is not a religious theory. Faith is the mystery of the kingdom. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. Faith is the mystery of the kingdom. First Timothy 3, verse 9. Faith is the mystery of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So, 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 he said, holding the word, the mystery of the faith. In what? In pure conscience. Faith is a mystery. Because it's not something you can see. If you take via the definition of faith in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence not seen. Number two, what is faith? Faith is not a principle nor a strategy. You, you don't plan faith. It is a spiritual force. First Corinthians 2, 4, verse 5. It's a spiritual force. That was why there was a spiritual force on me to declare. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. Verse 4 to 5. First Corinthians 2, verse 4 to 5. First Corinthians 2, verse 4 to 5. Praise God. Media team, you just have to be fast with me. First Corinthians 2, verse 4 to 5. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the what? The spirit and of what? Power. Verse 5, that your faith should not in the wisdom of men, but in the what? The power. So faith is a force. Faith is a force. Number three, am I right? Faith invokes the hand of God into your circumstances. When you have faith, the hand of God has nothing to do but to come down because of you. So each time you exercise faith into a thing, you are applying for that job, you are applying for that contract, not with the mentality of maybe they may give it to me. No, 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 no. You are applying for that thing with the faith that if there is anybody that will be favored, it will be me. I don't get into anything and I have the mentality of failure. Oh, okay, they will not accept. No, 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 no. It must be me. But pastor, other believers are there. I don't care. Hello? The Bible says, no, no man by the flesh. Other believers is a title without entitlement. Faith is a title with entitlement. So everybody can be here, but not one person has faith. Am I communicating? It's possible. Number four. Number four. Faith is not a belief system. Faith is not a belief system. Faith is a spiritual weapon. Hebrews 11, 33, 34. Faith is a spiritual weapon. Weapon. Faith is a spiritual weapon. Hebrews 11, verse 33 to 34. 
who through faith subdue kingdoms. They did not lift up one bullet to shoot. No. They did not lift up a gun. They did not lift up a sword. But by faith, they subdued kingdoms. Wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of the lion, talking about Daniel. Verse 34, they quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness we are made strong, even while they were weak in their body. They were made strong. Yesterday I was here up until we celebrated up until late about, about, about 11, right? 11 going to 12. We were walking. And at some point, I started saying, my back is aching me. Praise God. And I started feeling some kind of feverish. While I was leaving and I said to myself, I said, never. Somebody say never. never. See, I was not saying never to just say, oh, you see, let me just say never so that the devil will just know that I've said never. No, no, no. I was saying never. That I cannot mount up here with pains on me. When I called my wife, she said she's going to give me, offer me some massage. When I got home, there was no massage. I just eat my food, take care of myself, went to the bed and slept. The Holy Spirit gave me massage. And today I'm, I'm good. Am I communicating with somebody? While I was sleeping in the dream, I saw myself in the dream and a woman approached me and said to me cough and I coughed and something came out of me he said throw it out and that was it what you say works for you don't just talk because they say talk you open your mouth and start talking no what you are saying do you even believe it let me tell you the enemy will come but faith is what we keep and sustain you. Faith is the currency that moves heaven. Faith is the only thing you will use to buy any product from heaven. Faith is what moves God. Faith moves the world. Faith moves power. Faith moves everything. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, they subdue nations. It's only by faith you will subdue coronavirus. Not by vaccines. After all, there are stories of people that have taken the vaccine and yet they are still struggling with the coronavirus in and out. It's by faith, speaking into the atmosphere, that I sanitize you by the blood of Jesus. And no power has the audacity to mess you up. It is by faith you subdue powers. Your head will not answer to death. You are not saying a believing amen. amen. Your head will not answer to death. Amen. Faith is a spiritual weapon with, with, limit, with, with unlimited capacity to silence the enemy. Faith is a spiritual weapon with unlimited capacity to silence the enemy. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Faith by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. It's the unlimited. There is no limited faith. Jesus said, if you have faith, just ask little as a mustard seed. How many of us have seen a mustard seed before? Very little thing. Very little thing. Very, very little. Jesus said, if you have that little stuff and say to that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and you doubt not, say it shall be done. Say above all. Somebody say above all. Can I hear you say above all? You know what above all means? Above everything around you. Taking 
the shield of what? Faith. He said, wherein ye shall be able. It's faith that gives you the ability and the, come on, permit me to use Kevin Peters' dictionary lexicon. Ah, ah, it is faith that gives you the ability. Mm -hmm. The ability to be able to quench all fairy darts of the wicked. You know what fairy that is? That you are sleeping at night and suddenly you felt a heavy drop on your chest. Boom! That you are walking, a wind just blew you and your neck locked. Fairy darts of the enemies. Fairy darts of cancer. Fairy darts of sicknesses of every kind. Faith is the only thing you use to quench it and silence them forever. Lift up your hands. Say after me. Say from today. I will demonstrate the power of faith in all limited capacity. Somebody say believe in amen. You're looking for a miracle. You're believing God for a miracle. Operate in faith. If there is no power in the church, then the gathering is nothing but association of brethren. What differentiates associations and community gathering is the power that is present to heal the sick to deliver the oppressed in the church. I love power. Hello? Oh boy. Power? Power is what makes you different from other people that believe in what they believe. The power of the Holy Spirit? Jesus. When the Bible said that at the mention of the name Jesus, just one name, so all the knees around your life, they will bow. So you have that capacity, that endowment of grace and power. Why don't you use it? Of course, you know why? Because you call the name of Jesus anyhow. Called him in vain. When a mosquito flies, Jesus. You are hungry, Jesus. You want to eat, Jesus. When you are filled up, you rub your stomach, you're happy. Oh, Jesus. So when the time comes for you to be serious and call it for help, the angels will think that you are joking. Somebody said the mystery of faith. Let's see something in the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 27 to 28. Daniel chapter 3, verse 27 to 28. The book of Daniel chapter 3, 27 to 28. And the princes, the governors, and captains, and the kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw this man. Upon whose bodies, are you saying that? Upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Verse 28. Verse 27. Go back to verse 27. And the princes and governors, okay, go back to verse 28. Go back to 20, verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shed what? Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they what? 
they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Somebody say faith. You see, we read the Bible say by faith, they subdue kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar was subdued by the faith of three little Hebrew boys. Three. Not me. Not the whole congregation. Three. Outstanding believers with faith in God. When the king said to them, at the sound of the trump, if you don't bow, I will cast you into the fire. You know what they told him? Oh king, we are not mindful of your words. You know what that means? The man that to him, you, they believe that has the power of life and death. They said to him, we are not mindful of what you're saying. But you see this your image, we will not bow to it. Let me tell you, there are times that you exhibit Holy Ghost rascality. So you can gain a rugged result. By their faith, they subdued the kingdom. And they were exempted from the execution. Why? They were thrown into the fire. And the fire had no power over them. You know how, fire, how hot that fire is? The Bible says even those that were taking them into the fire were burnt. And they were thrown into the fire. Their faith was not shaken. They weren't challenged one bit. And they were in trouble in their heart. If we die, let us die. That is a statement of a believer that has sold itself. I don't know why as a believer you'll be afraid of death. Any believer that is afraid of death, check that person, they are not born again. If you know that if anything should happen now, you're going to heaven. So, are you afraid of death? The Bible says those that seek to keep their life, will lose it. I'm not seeking to keep mine. God keepeth it for me. He's the keeper of my life. I don't, I, I, I see, I am not mindful of my life because I have no power to preserve my life. He's a preserver of my life. You think the devil has not come to knock on my door? He has come many times, but he has been met with disappointment. Am I communicating with somebody? faith is domicile in the heart, not in the head. The reason why your faith is not working because your faith is here and not here. <laughs> head faith is equal to theoretical kind of faith. Faith is not taught. Faith is received can't teach somebody faith. Faith is a mystery. In your time of walking with the Lord, you develop that mystery and that grace. There are men that stepped into this country with nothing. And today they are ruling over all those that had some faith. They believed in their God. Abraham by faith saw John from his father's land to a land that he doesn't know anybody and he became the richest of all he became so rich that the people were threatened by his wealth because he had faith in God who do you have faith in? here is your uncle is that uncle or that auntie or that friend or your father how can a man at the age of 40 be still sucking from the mother? Is that a blessing? In fact, that his own is even worse because he doesn't even have faith on in himself. Talk more of being a world changer.
Breast milk is a, is a milk of comfort and it's not meant to be forever. A time comes when the breast milk should be taken either by choice or by force. One of, one of those days I was going somewhere back home and I saw a boy of seven years still running back to the mother's breast. I said, ah, stop that. What an abomination. And the mother said, leave him. I said, for what? He said, so if you keep sucking this, you don't want no one again to come. You want to suck the one every other person will come. And he's the first son and the only child. I said, no. That must change. He told the mother, take this breast milk or else you will, you, you will have a 50 year old baby in your house. So it's domiciled in their heart, not here. Romans 10 10. Faith is domiciled in your heart. The reason why it's not working is because you read it and you crammed it. The reason why you can't remember it and to say it when you confront challenges is because it's not here. For with the heart, man what? Not the head. For with the heart, man believe unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. So your head knowledge has nothing to do with your heart, belief, and faith. Don't place your faith here. The reason why you are not you are not getting it is because you are acting like faith is a logical reason. So you place everything about faith here. And because your faith is loaded here in your logical reasoning, so you always want to manipulate your way and believe that that was faith. That wasn't faith. Faith is you going to a place without money in your pocket. Yet you came out with your pocket filled with money. That is faith. Jesus said to the to the to the to the 70. He said to them, Go, take nothing, take no pause, take nothing, just go. Because Jesus knew that there is no way you will preach the word of God that your pocket will not be filled up and you will not be taken care of by heaven. Make that choice today to be a, that exceptional believer. Even when many are compromising around you, do not compromise. Let them call you names. It's okay. Names don't kill you. After all, Jesus was called the king of Bezebel. Yes. He still remains Jesus. And his gospel today is the, is the greatest gospel preached on earth. Jesus' ministry lasted only three and a half years. But today, is the, is, is the largest followership in the whole world up to today. So don't bother yourself what people say. People must say something because their mouth is anointed to talk. Uh, if the mouth does not talk, it starts smelling. So for them not, for their mouth not to smell, they need to talk. You don't know. Uh, even when you brush very well with, with your brush and toothpaste and you don't talk, Gets dry. Somebody say, I hear you. So make sure your faith is coming from the heart. When you meditate with the heart unto the Lord, you see the sweet movement of grace flowing in inside of you. Am I communicating with somebody? Open to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 13. Faith manifests its true power through our tongue what you say. You see that? You say with the, with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the heart man believe and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. My communicating. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. I hope you're taking note down. Praise God. Faith manifests its true power through our tongue. He having the same spirit, talking about Jesus, of faith. According as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We, we, that's you and I, you and I, we also believe 
and therefore we do what? We speak. So if God is a talking God, how come you are not a talking believer? If I see anything that I don't like, I start speaking against it. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be removed. I speak against you. I command the heavens to fight you. I begin to speak. Because why? That thing is an anti-redemption. It's not from God. Redemption has impact empowered your mouth to create. You know, your mouth can create things. And that's why you have to be very careful what you say. I know of a man that keeps speaking death. Death. So if I die, every time he wants to sit down, he says, so, when I die, 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 when I die. And he didn't live long. The book of Mark 11, verse 23. He didn't live long. Mark 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, a saying must be there, whosoever that say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall doubt and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He said he shall receive whatsoever he has said. 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 Anything he has said, he will receive it. Both good and evil. Why is it that we so much, so of us so much believe evil sayings and it's so easy for us to speak evil but when it's time to speak good you get tired have you noticed that it's so easy to speak evil things and as you're speaking evil things energy is given to you more you're speaking but when it's time to say okay say something good about yourself you only speak for two minutes and you are short of words something is wrong somewhere I could call somebody now and say, tell me about the bad things that has happened in your life. You will see. You will come and see. The record is long. But when you tell them, okay, tell me something good you want, they will take 30 minutes to talk about the bad things in their life that has happened. But use only two, three, five minutes to say about what they want. What an injustice to yourself. The Bible says, forgetting those things that are behind. Fix your mind to the crown before you. Am I talking to somebody? The book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, life and death is in what? The power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We have faith so therefore we speak. We have faith, so therefore we speak. So if you don't have faith, your statement will be very porous. When you meet a believer that don't have faith, their statement betrays them. When you say to them, let's go, God will give us victory. They say, you see, you don't understand. This is Canada. And they try to present Canada like God does not exist in Canada. Then they tell you, Pastor, you see, you don't understand. You see, in Canada, things are done what? Differently. And I said, okay. They act like God here in Canada is so polished like the white man. I thank God for God. Okay? I thank God for God. If you're a black man, he's a black man to you. If you're an Asian, he's an Asian man to you. If you're a white man, he's a white man. If you're a brown, he's brown to you. According as you understand him, he will manifest himself to you. If you see God as a weak God, he will manifest as a weak God to you too. 
trap. I refuse to see my God as a weak God. Am I communicating with somebody? I refuse to see God as the one that doesn't honor faith. God honors your faith. If you will have faith today, he will honor it. Everything you say counts for or against you. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 6. Everything you say we either work for you or against you. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 6. Everything you say, we either work for your good or work against you. Mind what you say. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. No, ah, I made mistake. That it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and do what? And destroy the work of thy hand. Do not say it was an error. Mind what you say with your mouth. Lastly, faith is a fight. Don't let no, nothing or nobody take the fight out of you. Faith is a fight. I know of a, of a man that was on the bed and they said to him, I said, there is no solution. He said, no, I'm not giving up. Praise God. Somebody was talking to me the other day that his dad was in the hospital and the doctor said that he's not, he told them, I said, keep these marks on me. I want to see how the end will look like. Say, I'm not giving up on myself. People are there not giving up. And you, little sore throat will happen. You will use your hand and diagnose yourself and tell yourself, hey, Corona. I mean, people have become so fearful of coronavirus more than God. They fear coronavirus now more than God. Amen. Maybe those that, that keep touching me the way and talking to me anyhow. I don't, maybe I will just take some signpost and write Corona all of my body. Coronavirus. <laughs> so you will not be afraid of me at once. <laughs> Praise God. There are men and women that fear coronavirus more than God. If they tell them the house you are right now that there is coronavirus in, they will not wait to ask a very intelligent question. How come you would say there is coronavirus inside my house? They will vacate that house immediately. But if a man of God comes and tells us, leave your house, they will ask question, but pastor, why should I leave my house? Faith is a fight. You have to put up a fight. Don't give up because people are giving up around you. Don't give up because the situation is not pleasing in your eyes. Faith is not a physical contact. Faith is a spiritual mystery. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. Faith is a fight. Put that fight to work. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your future. Don't give up on your destiny. Don't give up on that job. Don't give up on that contract. Put a fight. My story says, fight the good fight of faith. I love this. Fight the good fight of faith. That you notice somewhere in your family, the devil is messing up your children. Call that child. Rekete the child will be looking at you. Prophesy into the life of that child. Your words have power. Your words, they have power. Don't just say, oh, I don't just know. This child is not following bad kids around and she, he, he or she is not copying something bad. Hello? You are complaining. The ones outside, they are empowering your children. You are not empowering your child. Counter every virus that they have put inside of them. Speak the word. Tell 
them that you are the God they see here on earth. Faith puts you in control. And faith gives you the grace to fight. Rise up to your feet. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. It's through that fight you lay hold unto eternal life. Open your mouth and begin to give God praise right now. In the name of Jesus. Grace unto you, Lord. Grace unto you. Go ahead and decree. Go ahead and decree. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and decree. Go ahead and decree. Faith, faith in my system. Faith in my life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I release a bountiful faith. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. Begin to decree. Your brigade You must exercise that faith. In the name of Jesus. Faith to conquer faith to bring down mountains in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the name of Lord I give you praise I give you honor in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you thank you oh Lord for the grace Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the faith. Thank you, O oh Lord. We give you all praise and honor. Be that glorified. Wave those hands to the Lord. Just say thank you, Father, for the gift of faith. Come on, go ahead. Seriously say, seriously say, thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. 